Hello everyone, Upper Blackrock Spire has been revamped for Warlords of Draenor, so I thought it'd be fun to take a look at the changes and find out what's going on. Keep in mind that beta will be beta, all things are subject to change and nothing is set in stone. Let's begin, shall we? Upon entering UBRS, you'll have to clear the chambers to open up the door just like in the original version. Around the room are sentry cannons and you'll want to take them out first since they hurt a lot. And the NPCs, they will tinker with them to turn them hostile. Second priority are the rallying banners that the Black Iron Grunts place on the floor since the longer they're up, the bigger the acro circle becomes and they will pull reinforcements. I will personally prioritize the Black Iron Warcasters since they cast a spell called Shrapnel Storm, which is like a mini mana bomb under a random player. It does a ton of damage if you stand in it while it explodes and it's a little bit tricky to see so make sure to keep an eye out for it and move out of it before it explodes. As always, Line of Sight is a great tool to pull ranged trash mobs so if you need to use it, hide behind the pillar to draw them in. When you're fighting the Rage Maul Wargs, make sure to move out of the way when they start causing their frantic mauling. It's indicated by a small cloud of dust on the floor and it hurts a lot, so make sure to move out of it. Besides that, just clear the chambers and make your way to the first boss. Now the story behind this revamp, as far as I understand it, is that Zela and her troops, they've taken over the Dark Portal in the Blasted Lands, and they've made the base of operations inside Black Rock Mountain. This is exactly what the first Horde did during their first invasion, and for those wondering, the Black Rock Mountain was not named after the Black Rock Clan, nor was the Black Rock Clan named after the Black Rock Mountain. This was just a coincidence, and Orgrim Doomhammer, who was the war chief at the time, he saw this similarity as a good sign and a good omen. Now once you've cleared the chambers, the doors open up and a wave of weak mobs will attack you, AoE them down and get ready for the first boss. Orbender Gorashan becomes active once you've deactivated all the Ruin Conduits. He is draining power from the ancient ruins placed in the spire by the Dark Iron Dwarves. The fight itself is pretty simple, he does an AoE explosion called Shrapnel Nova, but it's very healable. He will place spikes on the floor which will try to pull you in and deal massive damage, and he does some sort of circle blade attack, but we hardly even notice this. Eventually he'll start draining power from the cage again. First he'll take one, then he'll take two cages, then he'll take three. Maybe he'll take even more than that. You need to disable the cages as fast as you can since during this time he'll take less damage and he'll power himself up to cast Thunder Cacophony, which deals a ton of AoE damage. Once they're all disabled, his shield goes down again and you can resume DPSing. Now during one recording, uh, something very strange happened and I'm not sure if this is part of his regular encounter, if his regular mechanics or if we messed up the pool. Right from the start a massive ball of lightning started to move around the room and it, it moved in a circular pattern and touching the field did a whole bunch of damage. This only happened once so if it does make sure to look out for it and move accordingly when disabling the cages. Next up is the old hatchery area if you want to be safe 
pull them back while focusing on the black rock engineers first. They cause the beam, which hurts a lot, but you can interrupt it and you can stun them. The alchemists, they use a rejuvenating serum, which heals their targets, so stun or kill them fast. The big draconic monstrosity, he cleaves, so tank it away from the group, and he'll also cause an eruption, which is a line of fire on the floor. If you get hit by it, you'll be dazed for a few seconds, so avoid it as much as you can. Kirak is the second boss, and as you can see, a black iron emissary is standing with him. I suspect that Zela and the rest of the iron horde are trying to make an ally out of him, since he is a survivor of Novarian's forces, and he is now attempting to harvest the remaining black dragonflight eggs. This is where the monstrosities come from, so let's take him out before they become a threat. Kill the big ads first, since you don't want to deal with the line of fire while also dealing with the boss and his mechanics. Make sure to take the ads away from the group again, since they still cleave. The boss himself will cause the same beam as we've seen before, the debilitating fixation beam. Interrupt this as much as possible since it does really hurt. He also uses a rejuvenating serum either on himself or the ads and although you can out DPS it with 3 DPSers, you'll probably want to either spell steal it or purge it or do something to remove it. His final major ability is Vile Blood Serum, which places green pools of poison on the floor. Spread out and move out of the pools as fast as you can. I'm not sure when this ability kicks in, I tried to see if this was health based or time based. It looks like it happens around a minute after you pull him, but I'm not entirely sure. Once Kirik is dead, you can have a look at good old Leroy Jenkins, who lies dead in the corner. His original achievement has been removed, it's now a, a legendary kind of achievement, so if you still need to get it, get it before Warlords is released. His new achievement requires you to help him get his devout shoulders, but it's only available on heroic mode. Perhaps we'll see his ghost who wants this, or perhaps he'll be alive even before you enter the chamber. I can't wait to find out. Now upstairs you can kill the ogre to be safe, move away from his smash attack. He also has a frenzy which increases his damage done, so you could use a, a tranquil shot or you could remove it, but the damage increase isn't insane. The black iron packs that we're going to clear next are a blast from the past. They have their shield slam and charge abilities which will knock you back and in the old days this would knock people into the whelp eggs and cause gigantic wipes. Thankfully the whelps are gone now but, but still keep your back away from the edge and make sure you don't get knocked off.
The last pack before the stadium has a Black Iron Summoner in it. Make sure to kill it, stun it or interrupt it before it can summon more ads. The stadium is very similar to the old version, except now nobody has a ring or the option to summon a gigantic dragon spirit. Zela and Tarbek, they are standing on top watching you take on wave after wave and the packs are not very different from what you faced before. Move away from the war frantic mauling, interrupt summoners before they can summon ads, move to the tank if one of the Vilema hatchlings is attacking you so he can pick up aggro. Thankfully they've improved the spawning time compared to the old version and you won't have to do this again in case you wipe. For those interested in his backstory, Farback is an orc born on Drenor and he was honored by Zela with the opportunity to lead the Iron March into Azeroth. I've seen it together with Zela in the Blasted Lands, they were flying on top of their mounts next to the Dark Portal, so these two lead the Iron Horse invasion into Azeroth. Once all the waves are cleared, Adam Barb Skyreaver comes out and in an epic motion, Farbeck jumps on his back and he joins the fight. Take out the Skyreaver first, move out of the pools of fire and when he's looking at you, make sure to move away before he casts his breath of fire. Tarbek uses charge and he tosses weapons around the field which you need to avoid. At 30% health, Ads jump down and join the fight and we try to take them on, we try to kill them, but currently their health is just way too high. If this is going to stay the same, make sure just to ignore the Ads, pop your hero, pop your cooldowns and bring Farbek down. You can stun or freeze the Ads, you can kite them around, so play around with it and make sure to bring the boss down.
This specific ogre, the Black Iron Ground Shaker, is a little bit different from the others since he has an instant fear and will just start smashing in a straight line. Move out of his way or stun him because the smash hurts. The next room has Black Iron Drake Keepers and what you'll probably want to do is CC them and take them out one at a time before they're able to open up the gigantic bear traps and release all their whelps. Personally I find it way more fun to just let them do their thing and AoE all the little whelps down. The Drake Keepers will also cause chains of fire, make sure to interrupt or stun them. Son of the Beast is not in the dungeon journal, so he might not be a real boss, but he is a lot of fun. He has knockbacks, he has an instant fear, lines of fire, explosions and everything you could wish for from the beast. It does need a gnome though, there isn't a gnome that pops up after you defeat him, so it does need a little bit more gnome power, but besides that, an awesome fight. The next boss is Ragewing the Untamed and this one is probably my favorite boss in the entire dungeon. Ragewing is a gigantic proto-dragon raised by the Dragomar clan. Her unbreakable spirit has kept her from being taken as a mount by any of the Dragomar, although Zela has been able to create an uneasy friendship with her. The fight takes place on the bridge so you don't have a lot of room to move. In the first phase she'll place pools of fire on the floor and so use her dragon bath attack from either left to right or right to left. Make sure to move out of the fire and don't get caught in the chains.
At 70 and 40% health, phase 2 begins where she'll fly away and tons of whelps show up. You need to AoE the whelps while keeping a close eye on the floor since Ragewing will shoot balls of fire which you need to avoid since their damage is pretty insane. It's pretty difficult to see the yellow swirling indicator with all the whelps flying around so kill them as fast as you can. She'll bombard you from both sides before returning to phase 1 and she'll do this twice until she goes into phase 3. Phase 3 begins after her second bombardment and now she stand on the bridge and stack Burning Rage which increases damage dealt by 40% and stacks 4 times. Pop your cooldowns, keep avoiding the pools of fire and make sure to kill her. The next room has packs of worm callers and ember skill item flights, which makes for a devastating combo. The ember skill is a dragon and he will spit a line of fire, while the worm caller will chain pull the group. That means that if they combo this attack, you'll be pulled into the line of fire and it really hurts a lot. So make sure to either kill the dragon first or tank him in a corner. If you tank him in a corner, the line of fire will only go into the wall, it doesn't travel any further and your group will be that much safer. After clearing the rest of the trash, we face off against the final boss, Warlord Zela herself. This room is set outside of UBRS, and if you look down, you can even see the meeting stone for BRD, you can see the old entrance into Multicore. It's, it's, it's beautiful, it's outside the mountain, and I love that they put this inside the dungeon. Now their plan is to trigger this ultimate weapon, this doomsday device, they want to activate the volcano, and they want to destroy the surrounding areas, including Stormwind. I'm not sure why the Horde should care about Stormwind falling beneath lava, but I'd imagine that they also want to stop this Iron Horde invasion, and therefore they also want to stop Zela. 
The fight itself isn't fully done yet, unfortunately certain abilities don't work, certain animations still need to be implemented, but still in its current version it's pretty damn cool. The first phase is against Zela, where she'll use her Black Iron Cyclone. She will fixate on a random party member, she'll spin around and she'll deal AoE damage. Run away when she's targeting you and avoid dragging her through the rest of the group. Apparently, she should also use an ability called Rebounding Blade, which you need to spread out for to reduce the damage taken, but I didn't notice this attack yet. She also does a knockback, and the dungeon journal says that the tank, he should keep his back against the wall to avoid being thrown off the platform. Unfortunately, I did my very best, but I couldn't find any damn walls. The small torches in the corners didn't help, I tried at the chains, I tried with the flaming bridge of death, Nothing helped, so we had to come up with something else. The way we eventually dealt with it was pulling Zela to one of the corners and keeping my back towards the opposite corner. This way I had enough room to fly through the air while avoiding being thrown off the platform and if you're a warrior you can just use your charge to fly back to Zela. At around 60% health, phase 2 will begin. Zela, she runs off, she jumps on her mounts and several worm riders jump on the platform while ember skill item flights are using their dragon breath to light up the platform. Kill the ads as fast as you can while Zela is occupied and you need to look around the platform. There's a decent amount of time before the dragons open their mouth and actually attack, so move to avoid taking that damage. Eventually Zela will join the fight again, so you'll have to avoid the fire, you'll have to avoid being knocked back into the lava, you need to avoid her cyclone, you need to spread out to avoid her weapons. I think this is going to be hectic, but also great fun. Overall, I really, really enjoyed UBRS. The numbers of course need a bit of fine tuning, some abilities need to be implemented, but so far I give it a thumbs up. I love the tiny nostalgia trips with being knocked down and the son of beast, Leroy, all that good stuff, and the mechanics are really, really cool. I just want to say thank you so much to everybody who joined me in this party. Uh, Joe, also known as Wow Martian, Day, Jab Cop and Viciousness, thank you for sticking with me and getting these recordings. We didn't do this instance once, we did it twice because the instance decided to reset itself just before Warlord Zela. On top of that, I was constantly tossed into the lava, so once again, thank you very, very much. Which brings us to the end of this quick look at UBRS. I did a little bit of the lore, I did a little bit of a guide, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Subscribe if you like my videos, and until next time guys, see ya! Our bond is iron. Our will unbreakable. Who will stand against us?